With vehicles as flashy and as important and as, well, frankly, legendary as the Porsche 959 and others like the Audi RS5 Turbo, of course, coming to the game, it's easy for other vehicles like the Mazda. Thankfully, the Mazda has had a lot of buzz, a surprising amount of buzz from players, which is nice to see that it is getting some love, plenty of love, in fact, as far as the comments that I've seen, but also this vehicle. See, in a funny kind of way, I've actually seen, at least from comments here on the channel, this seems to be the car that's getting the least chatter out of all five, which is curious given how iconic it is for Porsche, like the 959, but also the fact that it is the most expensive of the five, does probably put it out of the realm of interest for at least some players at two and a half million credits. And of course that two and a half million will most likely change in future. As with everything in the Haggerty collection, they do tend to fluctuate, that's kind of the point. But this particular car at two and a half million has stakes. One, it's a Porsche, so you have certain expectations of it. Two, it's expensive, so it needs to be at least a good collector's piece, but preferably good for something, some form of racing. And last but not least, of course, it's a classic Porsche. So even more so than the Porsche expectations, it's a legendary Porsche. So it kind of has to be good for at least something. I said, I believe as far as even the silhouette stage for this month's update, that I had high hopes for what it could do in the low power category though. And thankfully, that is exactly how it's turned out, because this car is the second to least most powerful car here, barely, barely edging out the Mazda by only two horses, but unlike the Mazda, it only weighs 650 kilos. So what it can do with that 179 horsepower is really, really good. The point level is quite modest, 511.64 technically, and being of course mid-engine rear-wheel drive, it's a bit different to your 911 experience. It is naturally aspirated, incidentally. And of course, being from 1964, the vibe, the handling, the overall experience with the car is going to be different than even something like a, a 70s or 80s Porsche, certainly the Porsches before. And with a distinctly more racing approach to its heritage, the potential is definitely there for the 904 to be one hell of a car. And I'm glad to say it is. Now it has some slip slidey nature to its back end, which of course goes hand in hand between being mid-engine and a classic. Those two things put together all but guarantee that's how it's gonna be. This is however a lot less tail happy and a lot less skittish than something like, for example, the Mangusta, which was pretty much the poster child for slippery vehicles from day one in GT7. And it is interesting overall because this car has ended up becoming a bit of a sleeper in GT7. It's not the kind of car which I would have ever thought that could happen to, but it sort of has. I don't hear anywhere near as many people talking about how much they use or enjoy or love the 904 or how shocked they were by it, and it's not really that kind of car because the power isn't going to rip your face off, the weight isn't ridiculously low, it's just good, and even the performance isn't going to rock your world, especially if you drive it back to back with something like a 959 or a DTM car but it's not to be discounted. This is a tremendously good car for the sub 200 horsepower category in particular, not to say that you can't take it much, much higher and get much more use out of it, but at the very least for that low level, it's very, very good. Because if you think about it, what are you gonna be going up against at that kind of power level, at least stock versus stock? Well, stuff like Integra Type R's. And of course, if you factor in tuning, well, maybe some tuned up lower level hatchbacks, maybe some K car action. But even then, like 180 horsepower is so minimal to work with that there are very few high performance cars in modern times that even work with that amount. Even, you know, standard hatchbacks are working with 200 minimum these days. So to do what this can do with well below 200, really is a testament to that being its greatest strength. Imagine kind of like a, the good stuff about a Mazda MX-5, but then make it 50 years old and even lighter with some motorsport flair peppered in there. That's essentially what you're getting with the 904, and it makes it a really good little car. It's a very different approach from most of the other Porsches in the game, not only because it's not rear-engined as the 911s are, but also because it has a very different shape even to most Porsches. It's a distinctly different approach. To me, as I alluded to before, this almost reminds me of more like an Italian-esque 
Porsche. It, it has kind of a Ferrari Dino shape, as I've mentioned before, at least to me. But it's a great looking little car. They, of course, made a, an homage concept to this in real life a few years ago, a, a couple of years back, I think it was. And that was a very 917 Living Legend-esque approach deliberately so and yeah i'm happy to see it in the game it's never been one of my favorite porsches but now that it is here it's a very useful little car two and a half million will probably still put some people off and i wouldn't necessarily call it an essential purchase but if you do decide to purchase it or if you are specifically looking for a low powered very competitive little car then under those circumstances it's a good choice. So that's it for my thoughts on the 904. I would love to hear your thoughts though. Either good or bad, maybe do you love the car? Are you using it a lot for a maybe particular event or circuit? Or maybe on the other end, do you think it's not worth the money or have you not even bothered? Either way, let me know. And of course, stick around tomorrow for the last of the five reviews before we get into other content, of course. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>